All right, we've got a really complex forecast to break down here. We're doing a deep dive into Northern Eurasia, specifically for that critical window from December 29th, 2025 to January 6th. And this isn't just, you know, a standard winter forecast. Not at all. We're looking at what some are calling the Great Eurasian Weather Divergence. It's a great term for it. The continent is essentially splitting into two completely different competing weather regimes. So our mission is to figure out what's driving that split and uh, what the specific risks are for you to watch. And what's really fascinating is that all this chaos on the ground, it actually started weeks ago, way up in the atmosphere. The primary driver is a major sudden stratospheric warming event, an SSW. Right, and that kicked off in late November. It did. We saw this massive high pressure anomaly, basically an anti-vortex form at the 10 millibar level. Okay, so for you listening, why is that specific altitude so important? The 10 millibar level, that's about 30 kilometers up, isn't it? It's the high altitude battleground, yeah. When that anti-vortex builds up there, it shows the polar vortex, which normally keeps all that Arctic air locked in, completely off balance. And in this case, it led to a total collapse. A total structural collapse. The winds actually reversed. And the sources are clear this is a statistical outlier. We've seen fewer than a dozen events like this so early in the season in the last 70 years. And this connects to the wider climate picture, right? Arctic amplification weakens that temperature gradient, makes the jet stream wobble. Precisely. And that makes these cold snaps, when they happen, much more violent. Because remember, a warmer atmosphere holds about 7% more moisture for every degree of warming. So when that frigid air finally breaks out, it's meeting much more fuel for precipitation. Exactly. The snow and ice storms get hypercharged. Which is the perfect place to pivot to the west, to this high energy maritime storm regime. The big one here is Storm Chandra. Mm, yeah. Hitting from the 29th through January 4th. And it's projected to undergo explosive cyclogenesis. That sounds dramatic. What does it actually mean on the ground? It means it's deepening at an extreme speed. It's a weather bomb. A weather bomb. Yeah, we're talking a pressure drop of at least 24 millibars in 24 hours. The central low could hit 930 millibars. To put that in perspective for you, that rivals a Category 3 hurricane. So we're talking massive wind, storm surges. Destructive winds, yeah. Hitting Ireland, the UK, northern France particularly hard. And all that warm, moist Atlantic air, it has to go somewhere. It pushes east right into Central Europe. It does straight into what we're calling the collision zone, Germany, Poland, Czech Republic, and that's where you get the most paralyzing conditions. Not snow, but ice. Dangerous freezing rain. It forms these thick, heavy ice shells, maybe one to three centimeters thick. That clear ice just snaps power lines and brings transport to a dead stop. So while the West is dealing with bomb cyclones and ice, the other side of this divergence is a deep freeze. The severe continental winter regime, yeah. Russia, Central Asia, it's a completely different world. And even within that, there's a huge difference between, say, Moscow and Siberia. Oh, absolutely. Moscow night lows are hitting minus 20 to minus 22 Celsius, which mm -hmm. is already way below average. But the most lethal cold is in the Sakha Republic Yakutia. The numbers there are just staggering. We're forecasting an actual temperature of minus 56 Celsius. With the felt temperature, the wind chill hitting minus 60, I mean, that's an immediate threat to life. So you've got Infrastructure trying to handle explosive cyclones on one end and this deadly, brittle cold on the other. What does that do to logistics, to energy markets? The disruption is immediate. You have ice fog grounding planes in Russia and Kazakhstan. At the same time, the extreme heating demand puts huge pressure on natural gas supplies. And then there's the south. Caucasus. I saw notes on massive orographic snowfall. Over 100 centimeters in Georgia. That means critical avalanche risk and severe icing in the mountain passes. It's a multi-front problem. And it's not just the polar vortex acting alone. There are other things amplifying this. That's the key. This whole event is being amplified by the timing of a weak La Nina syncing up with the easterly phase of the quasi-biennial oscillation, the QBO. A perfect storm of atmospheric teleconnections. So what should you be tracking as this evolves? Well, the vortex itself, of course. But the really critical thing to monitor now is the progression of the Rex block. A Rex block, okay. It's a pattern where a high pressure system gets stuck north of a low. Mm -hmm. It creates a massive atmospheric traffic jam and it can lock this whole dangerous pattern in place. So that block is what will determine how long this hazardous window stays open. For you, the takeaway is this. When you're looking at future extreme weather, don't just track the cold track the global patterns like the QBO and La Nina that turn a bad forecast into something truly historic. 